Ozzy Alvarez. All right, who's got the next spot, G5? Spot nine. Spot nine. Charles G. Charles G. Les Moss. So the Aaron has a pop of only two tens. There's a few dozen nines. Still a great card. I'm going to look it up at bcp.com afterwards. See what the nine goes for. Les Moss. This is Jeff G. Wow. Calavito. Not quite a Hall of Famer. was a great ball player. And I'll tell you what, Mikey. The Duke's letter on the bottom is a very nice part as well. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Alavito's in some Hall of Fame play. Yeah, I hope so. Definitely. Alavito, the last card is coming up, and that is going out to Jim. So, Mike, how many Hall of Famers do we get in this pack? Uh, four, five. Snyder, Banks, Mantle, Aaron. Andy Matthews. Eddie Matthews. Five out of 12 is a pretty good ratio for pulling Hall of Famers. That was the last part of the pack. Congratulations to all that are in the 1959 Topps Baseball Cello Pack break. That was fantastic. Next up, we have our 1960s Topps Baseball Mixer. It's a 1963 Topps Baseball Wax Pack. A 1966 Topps Cello Pack. 68 Cello Pack. And a 62 Topps Bucks Penny Pack. We're going to get the names ready for you in just a minute. Appreciate everyone's patience. Late. You're making good time, Don. Really good time. How's everybody doing? Having fun? <laughs> Me too. So why don't you explain how we're going to handle the 60s mixer, okay? So first thing we're going to do is randomize the packs, the order of the packs. So again, 63 5th Series Baseball Wax Pack. There's a 66 Cello Pack with Orlando Zepeda on top. 68, I think it's 4th Series Cello. And then 62 Tops Baseball Bucks. That pack is graded by PSA. We will give that pack as is to the person who wins out of the break. We're not going to open it. We do ask that if you decide to open this in the privacy of your own home, your car, your office, street corner somewhere, hey, wherever right. it is. We have a special guest in the audience. I was going to invite him up on stage. He's not going up. To talk about the experience last year, Chris, and what happened with Mantle. You all right to come up here, though? Great. Chris Rock. We're about the So coming up on stage right now, Unexpected, the only uh, side of the to uh, to the show. Good buddy and friend of Vintage Breaks, Chris Roth. Yeah, I have a big hand. Yeah, I have This one, the bad Well, I want to uh, have the man with the legend in his own uh, in his own way tell everyone really just about what you were feeling, like what happened, how you found out, all that kind of good stuff. Even though I know the whole story, uh, again, while we're waiting to set up the randomizer, I'd love to share with you your company. Great, I'm gonna get to you. So you know, last year, it was in Cleveland, and uh, we broke out real Saturday. So on Saturday, no, it was actually Friday. It was Friday. Yep. I was jammed up at work. Didn't even have a chance to watch this live. I made six three notebooks in Baltimore. So family business, third generation now. And you know, the day is just dragging on, dragging on. I didn't get the email that it was breaking. So of course I go to YouTube to check out the great video. Accidentally clicked the recap video and abruptly ended that and turned it on to the replay video of the actual pack going forward. The 55 ball pack. This PS graded the pack, correct? And well, but you had to guesstimate how many cards were in that because there were no I spent 
So, so his guesstimation was correct, and there were 20 cards in the pack, 20 spots that were. 500 bucks a spot. 500 dollars a spot, and I believe I wound up with spot. 19. Well, 19 for certain. Yeah, that's the worst. Yeah. But I think 14 and 19, and one of the other card was the Roman. Yes. That was part of that comeback sequence. Yep. So. And we had no idea what was going to be happening in spot 19. Sure. So everybody just assumed that the sequencing was coming back and yeah. it was going to be another Ernie Banks. And lo and behold, it wasn't Ernie Banks. Uh, as a validation from his response and his eyes nearly fall to the floor. Yeah, I still hear it, but not recovered. And, you know, I'm, I'm in my press room watching this on the television on the wall. You know, seems like two or three people. And all the color just drained immediately out of my face. And I'm like, this this is impossible. This thing will just happen. And, uh, you know, at that point, fortunately, they didn't spoil the surprise for me. So they waited for me to reach out to them. And then it was like, oh my god, yes, let's get on this. And yeah. you're fantastic at supporting, um, you know, our ability to tell a story. Because uh, you were so instrumental in it, how you found out and stuff. So everybody down the bell, uh, from the ESPN, covered the story. And lo and behold, in 24 hours, I was being interviewed by the Washington Post. I'm like, oh, I thought you guys do politics. I don't follow politics. Uh, USA Today, um, all sorts of uh, you know out, uh, outfits that were covering us. And really, overnight, um, we had tons of new customers, uh, people from other countries buying from us at BizRace.com. And we were just forever grateful uh, that not only for that moment, but also how you know you kind of embraced it. Baltimore Sun came to the place. The yep. story we sent down some of our office J5 with the mantle yeah, yeah. Uh, so that the mantle could be there. But really, Vince Ray has kind of been the custodian of it, and for the first time ever, it is actually out on the display for sale. I'm going to talk directly to the man in the place himself, but it's for sale at Golden Auctions booth um, at the front of the National Even if you just like to see it on the display and take a selfie, I think it does five dollars each, three for ten. Don't do that with the card. Uh, it's not a big deal, but you know, obviously you've got to pay, you know, pay some expenses and stuff to come out here. So Chris, how has it changed your view on collecting vintage breaks? That's, that's a great question. It hasn't really changed me from a collecting standpoint, sure. but it just showed my, myself and I think everyone else that these little Easter eggs are still out there. They can be found. And, you know, when it comes to a 55 Bowman, be it the mail or any of the other 19 cards in the pack, the surface condition of the cards, if, if any of you have had an opportunity to lay eyes on it and see the actual gloss of those pack fresh cards, there's, there's zero comics. It's, it's, it's like, you know, they talk about some coins mixed in and circulated. Yep. Effectively, a baseball card, that's not an easy thing to find. And I think another uh, topic we've talked about a little bit over the last year or so that I think has become more prevalent in collecting is provenance. And so when you're talking about whether it be the Gretzky rookie, you hear us PSA, we're waiting for it anxiously, please. Um, or if it's the Mantle, uh, or if it's a Jordan rookie, or if it's a Magic Bird rookie, really anything in between that's a high profile. We're going to go, great, let's cut it off. But uh, the point is, is that I think that provenance is really important. And um, I want to thank Chris, not just like I said, for coming on stage, but also for all the support love over the last year. Thanks, Chris, very much. Can I get Mike's mic? Both mics? Yeah. Really? Yeah. All right. Mike doesn't have a mic. That's all right. All right, folks. Appreciate your patience. We're getting underway now with our first ever 1960s. That's so silly. This is, but we'll do the best we can here. 1960s Topps Baseball Mixer. So what this consists of is a 1963 Topps Baseball Wax Pack. This is the highlight. These are all some Topps that we'll find. It's my first 63 Topps nickel pack in probably 15, 18 years. 66 Topps Solo Pack features Orlando Cepeda on top, Hall of Famer. 68 Topps Baseball Four Series Solo Pack. And the last pack in the break is the 62 Topps Bucks. Let's get underway, guys. We're going to randomize the order of the packs first. 
So folks, what you're doing right now is you're randomizing the tracks, which is a little bit unusual for us. We usually randomize the names first. However, because there's four different items, the way we're going to determine the order is to determine the order of the items first, and then determine the order of the names. Now, like, I see a lot of uh, breakers who roll dice or something and determine how many times they're going to randomize lists. Yes. Do you do that? We do. Or we shoot Alice in the sky and we see uh, you know, the effects of that and count the stars that we see after the hour. Okay. Okay. I'm just curious, uh, how many times do you have to randomize it for it to be truly random? This is a trick question. Is it? I don't know. Uh, so uh, everyone has different uh, policies and breakers and such. We simply take two dice, we roll it, and whatever the two dice say, we randomize the list. Fits. What? Fits. Something fun as we're waiting here uh, that we roll out of it is we're doing uh, some interactive gift spending sprees that we've been giving away for these breaks. So some folks want 50 bucks, uh, 50 dollars on the line here. Some folks want a 50 dollar uh, spending spree, other folks want a 100 dollar spending spree. We're going to do it in an interactive style. Interactive style? How is it interactive? So if they're at the national and they won, I'm going to walk around with them for a few minutes and spend their money. They're not even going to spend for them. That reminds me of uh, one of my clients uh, taking a funny joke once when he loaned me his golf clubs and I thank them. I said, well, that's actually my dad's. And my dad always tells me it's easy to be generous with someone else's stuff. Well, certainly, but I'm looking forward to it because I know as a uh, you know, younger kid, uh, I very much wanted to come to every national. And it wasn't until I had my license and I was able to drive to Atlanta. And my dad said, you can drive to Atlanta? I said, I'll see you in a couple days, by a week. Uh, drove down here, that's my first ever national. Right. So, Chef, is this your first national? Got 10 on the random. Charles, what about you? Is this your first national? What do you guys think so far? So, that's what my son does. He gives me the thumbs up. All right, very cool. We are uh, having J5 on the uh, case here. How are you doing, J5? Great. We now we have uh, the order of the box. So the first pack we open is a 68 cello, then we're going to do the 66 cello. Um, the next person will get the spot in 62 tops of Buck's pack, they'll actually get the whole pack. And we'll open 63 less. Good luck everybody. Ready to go? 
All right, good luck, everybody. Top card is Bob Johnson. So Chef, you have the first spot. John A, you have the last spot in our 60s mixer break. So you have the third spot. Oh, still got the random screen on. Yeah, okay. we're looking for Chris right now to figure out where it is. Chris, could you please come to the stage? We got the first card sleeved up. We'll leave it there. So folks, for the rest of the show, we break for our booth right behind you. As you can tell, we've had a few IT issues as we move from our booth, which we are comfortably breaking out to the stage. But we are trying to figure that all out, and I appreciate everyone's patience. Coming up to Cam. We actually met him in person yesterday, which is fantastic. We've done several trades. Card number two is a Hall of Famer, Brooks Robinson. Ooh, that looks pretty nice. I like how you right there, Ivan. Yeah, if you want to see the hits one second early, go to Instagram. Mark M. Oh, that was really well said. Can I tease this? We have a rookie card coming up next. I can't say I've ever heard of one, for sure. That's a really nice card, Mark. We agree that for you on the house. Well, there may be some uh, collectors in this city that may have heard of that. Sure. Maybe much happier. Yeah. That's good. This would be a pretty nice card. Former White Sox 68 rookie stars. Yeah, this is a nice card. Ooh. Hall of Famer coming up. So, of course, folks, those of you who are not familiar with the term mixer, what it means is there's 30 different spots across a variety of these 1960s packs were opening, and we did not, um, we did not sell it out. Um, I think it was, we sold out the other day, but we knew we were going to open up the main stage. There we go, Hall of Famer Red Chin Days. And spot six, that's going up to Cam. Dennis is coming up, spot seven. Ooh, very nice. We got a Minnesota player coming up, I think you've heard of, Chef. Spot seven is going up to Dennis. He and Jim, got a nice Hall of Famer coming up. Oh, wow. Mike is doing all right so far today. It's beautiful. So we got a Rod Carew All-Star. Spot number eight is going out to Jim. And the next card, right back at you, another Hall of Famer. Oh, by the way, it's Hank Aaron. I want to see the centering on this dude. It's the uh, almost the end Almost dead nuts center. Awesome card. That is spot nine going out to Kev. Congratulations, Kev. Spot 10. That's June. Chef, you're coming up next, but it's Matt Jones. Isn't it all simple? So, Mike, in the game card, we give away to the first person to break because there's always been an extra card. Chef. Yep. So, Chef will get the game card as it was the extra card in the pack. We always give it out to the first person to break. Let's put a second on my hand. Hey, which is the seven pack we're over that uh, uh, the third order is the uh, 66 Tops oh, baseball solo pack, second series, possible Jim Palmer rookie. Ooh, Not part of the cold yet, and it's a PSA 10 sells for about $25,000. Top 
Mark is Orlando Cicada, Hall of Famer. Real quick while he's getting the, the cello off of this, Mark oh, Goose. Uh, hey, Layton, how much longer can you do vintage breaks for? There has to be a finite amount of these packs out there. You walk the floor, you go to shops, you talk to antique dealers. How much longer can you do this for? I think about it, I dream about it all the time. I about it. 12. Okay. And have the fingers crossed. But the reality of it is, they made a lot of it back then, and I enjoy the treasure hunt thoroughly. So you will have my vow, I will do my best to continue to find as much as I can, as long as I can. Ready for the Hall of Fame garage? Yep. Good luck, this is pack number two as part of the 1960s cello mixer that you put in vault spots at vintagebreaks.com. Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. That was for Great, that was for Jim. We got the Orlando Cepeda, Walt Alston, also a Hall of Famer. This is spot 13 in the 60s mixture. It's going out to Jim. Mark's coming up with two cards back to back. Looking for a Jim Palmer rookie. I was in Cooper's town when Palmer was inducted. My dad did not plan it that way, uh, but it was fantastic. Him and Joe Morton got elected that weekend. 15, who's 15? Jerry Lumpy. Jerry Lumpy, formerly of the Tigers. Spot 16 is coming up. That is Joe L. This is spot 16 for Joe. Chef, you're coming up next. Combo card of Dick Schofield and Howell here. It's be pretty nice. We did a little bit off center, Chef, top to bottom. No, Chef, have you taught your kids about center? Good. Good. So I see he subjected you to uh, this. He didn't let you run around and do what you want. Okay, spot 18. Gary Wagner. So I, I realize folks uh, that are out in the audience, you can see it on the screen, they're not up here. And these cards are razor sharp. Obviously you don't know where the century gods are gonna fall. But it's a lot of fun for us to do this four days a week in our office. It's really a break for us, not even work. Uh, Robert probably wouldn't say that, it ships an incredible amount. You know, I see the green there, but I know it's not a J, but that's the color of the polymer. Got a little excited there, Mikey. Spot 20. Nick W. from the Dodgers. It's going out to Steven. A couple more packs left in our 60s mixer. Mikey, we're definitely going to hustle a little bit for a 54 Bowman main event. We have the Jeopardy that are coming up after us, right? Yeah, don't, don't go anywhere after this break. We've got James Holzhauer, the Jeopardy champion, coming to the stage, and we're going to do some hobby Jeopardy. Do you think you know the hobby? Yes, yeah. Get the chance to win some prizes against the Jeopardy champion. So Noah Palmer looks like in this pack, or is there one more card in the room that John Schwab? No, that's it. There you go. Al Kaline. Yep, the great Al Kaline Hall of Famer. That's for Jim. He had the first spot. I think he had the first spot in this pack break, right? Excuse me? Jim had the first spot in the break, right? No, that, that goes out to someone. So 24, 25, five cards in the 63. Oh, this is someone's yeah. actual card. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. Okay. Al Kaline Hall of Famer. 25, 5, and 63. Okay, who's spot 25? Let's see about you. Good. Bronze is 25. Oh, awesome. Yeah. At our booth. Oh, okay. At our booth. Okay. So you'll be able to fit an opening pack with us later on today. It's okay. Very cool. Looking forward to it. How many of you know Stu Stone, who's up here? I'm familiar with why I would even point him out. Give him a big round of applause, even if you don't know him. 
And the reason you should know is he has a documentary from Netflix right now about his journey as a collector. Spot 25. Yep, the five cards left. He's going to be back up okay. on the stage at five if you want to learn more about that. So right now, the ball is the progress. Right. these cards. So Mikey's going to do the best he can to get through to 63 and then set us up so we can open the 54 gold pack on the center stage. I want to stay back here a little bit. Uh, he's got his glasses on. Glasses on. Charles, let me know if anyone comes up to you trying to buy pairs, please. We'd like a little bit of that. The first row may not be safe. Please be careful. What's up, Lou? I want to say thank you. That's our producer for the Vintage Rates PSA show every Wednesday at 4 30 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook.com slash PSA Cards. Lou and I have become buddies, and uh, we really had a heck of a ride over the last year. Him, myself, G5, and the rest of the guys. All right, now we do it. Wow. All right. Look at that, Mikey. Got I never need a safe cracker. I didn't let it go. Spot. Who's got the first spot? 25. These are the last five spots. Okay, 26, just 26. And a 1960s mixer. Cam, first spot under the gum. Under the gum. Here's the pack. First card under the gum goes to Cam. This is the Hank Aaron series. I haven't had this pack in 15, 20 years. Good luck, everybody. Let's be honest, though. First card goes to Cam. There's a lot of cards besides Hank. Just the hand there, that would be awesome. Right. Back, you know, one of the things that we told our bench based customers is really important. When you're going through half fresh cards, 50, 60, 70s, 80, 80s, just because it's not a Hall of Favor, I encourage you, please check out the pop report at psacard.com. Because low pop commons, wow, eat it, eat it. Yeah, we have the vintage, uh, actually, the vintage base page got archived. Oh, you might be it. Oh, oh, no. For the record, him to do that. Uh, I hope he's not ill. We depend on G5 heavily. Oh my god. I'm looking at space. I feel terrible. Oh, there's a doctor in the house. I would not have done that. There's a chef in the house. Does that count? That was <laughs> not rehearsed. Is that an ocean ball? No. Uh, the insert goes through the ocean ball. Um, you know, if it's 5 plus 1, like you give it away. Yeah. If it's 4 plus 1, it's a spot. So you have to figure out like that. So in danger of self-promotion, you need to get some In danger of self-promotion, what is the oldest part gum that you need? The oldest gum that you need? Not that old. I'm a big fan of that. Maybe the 80s? Yeah, 79? Not even I would do it for charity. If we raise money for congenital hyperinsulin, which is something that affects my son every day of his life, uh, it's a very rare medical condition. It's doing great. Uh, I would do it for that. Wow. We see that. Wow, Mikey, those parts are razor sharp. All right, next up. Spot two. Lee Thomas. There you go. Beautiful. Spot 27. It's going out to Thad. It's great meeting Thad yesterday, his wife. Very nice card coming up. G.C. Hartman. Almost dead nuts, it looks like. Mike, you will bring that out of the house. Yep. Spot 28, that's going out to Cloud. And then John L. and John A. have the last two cards. Ron P. Nice to sit around that one. So last card is coming up. So Mikey. And this is Jerry Walker. We were hoping it was Lord Walker. You remember that? We were hoping it was the 7th Series. But Scotty A from Just Collect is right. So that was the last part of our 60 solid mixer. Thanks for everyone who was in that mixer. So, Mikey, you got 10 minutes for a stop in uh, top of the hour. I'll give that away. It's the unusual. Okay, the first person in the break. Right, so that would be, I think, Cam. John, John, you can That's a nice part. Be careful with that, please. Great, so now we have the main event coming up. Our 1954 Bowman Baseball Nickel Wax Pack. Possible Mickey Mantle, Ted Williams, 
Mikey Hart stop yeah. in 10 minutes. Can we, we do it? it? I can, as long as Johnny gets the list. We're good. All right. So we are cracking with that. Quickly, are we cracking? If not, we're cracking more people. We're going to try to crack here. Gotcha. Hart stop in 10 minutes. Yeah. All right, here we go. We're rolling the dice. Snake Eyes. Good luck, wherever. Good luck, everybody. Snake Eyes. That means it's twice as random. Two X, or is it algorithmic? It's been a long week. How random is random? I just want to answer that question. I'm going to see it for four years. I should have asked before. Here we go. So you're on the center stage. You ready? <laughs> Yes. Good luck, everybody, in this 1954 Bowman Baseball Nickel Lax Pack. Six spots, the seventh spot affected by the gun will be given out to someone in the break. Savage. The pack sold out of VintageBreaks.com yesterday in six minutes flat. Wow, you are a savage, Mikey. He's getting out of there. We're going to pull this off. And I hope to goodness we get a mantle and ten rooms. So once again, the first card affected by the gum will go to Thad because he has the first spot, Mikey. Then the order after that is Thad, Jim, Mark, Eric, John, and Dennis. Good luck to each and every one of you. The top card under the gum goes to Thad. Yep, that's the free. Yep. Nervous? Yeah. Don't make him nervous. 54. Oh. Oh Ooh, my. Disgusting. Oh, I thought it said Ted Williams. <laughs> that is, so the oldest gum I've eaten is 1955. This would be a new record for me. Vile. I would not touch that. Oh my goodness. Del Weber. Del Weber is the free card in the break. Wilbur. Going to one or two? No. Yeah. I only had six cards. That's right. Yeah, Mikey, that's the free card. Got a few minutes left. Appreciate everyone hanging out with us for the hour. Do you have another one? Just a few minutes. Yeah, we'll take another one. Champion. Market has one. Yeah. 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 So here is spot one. Bad. Frank Thomas. Frank Thomas, but not the one from Chicago. Spot two is going out to Jim. It definitely looks like the gum got some of these cards, which you know, we don't know, obviously. Spot three is going out to Mark. Definitely got a big crowd coming out there. So far, some really great centering on these things. There's some real little off on what I saw, but the gun is affecting some of the cars, unfortunately. But, you know, we always think there are customers of interest. And you never, ever know what's going to come out of that. Mm. Now, I'm noticing some of these are in cursive on the front, and others are printed. Do you know the story behind that? I do know. I do know that these are not easy packs to find. And we're very fortunate that we came across them. Couple spots left. This is spot five. This is going out to John A. Trick loan. And you're going to be doing interactive thing with every audience, right? Yeah, James. Right. James Holtzauer from Jeopardy is going to be here next, as I guess many of you already know. Basically. That is the last spot. So no, unfortunately, no Mickey or no Ted Williams. 
I love her. It's been a fantastic hour on the stage. Really appreciate everyone's patience. I know we only have a few minutes left. Chris, if I'm not mistaken, but we're still going to do our promo of the booth tomorrow on Sunday for the first 50 people. Yeah, the first 50 people that come to the Vintage Trade booth tomorrow and Sunday will be given a prize pack that includes a gift card to Vintage Freaks, a free vintage card, and uh, there's a few ready card hits as well. So please check us out if you get a chance tomorrow morning or Sunday morning. We have just a minute or two left. I want to thank you, of course, for helping us uh, moderate. You don't, have, you don't have to thank no, us at all. No, no, we named Mickey this year, but we, we did get a Mickey. It just wasn't a main one. We got to put him on top since 47 is a red card. Yeah. And of course, we had a lot of fun doing it. We don't have to have him or Oh, we're, we love having you up here. And, uh, you know, honestly, at this rate, don't miss them next year in Atlantic City because if I recall bouncing backwards, last year we had the 55 Mickey Mantle pulled out of the pack and the Ernie Banks from that same pack. That gets, my Chicago guy gets overshadowed by that Mickey Mantle card, but that alone is a good break. And actually, the first, uh, the, the last time the show was in Atlantic City at the National, we were going to trade, but we weren't really, you know, doing what we do today. And we get some formal breaks on the center stage. We opened the 62 pass football pack. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was wondering about was the year before that, you all get some other packs chasing away at Gretzky and we're going to get them on stage, so we have James and Jeffrey come on, but the year before that was Mike Dickel. So every other year is looking really good right now. So we still got a few names up here at the National, so check us out at youtube.com slash vintage rates, but of course, hop on over to our booth, which is right behind you. Appreciate everyone hanging out with us today, thanks so much. Awesome, thank you, Lee. All right, give it up. Yeah, That was awesome. Uh, in a few short minutes, stick around. We'll be bringing on the Jeopardy champ, James Holhauser. Let's hear it for Jeopardy champ, James. All right, I got, I handed out raffle tickets already. We're going to pull three people to play.